Welcome to Excellence in Peer Review, the Tina and Francis Review Training Network. This module will cover the topic of critical assessment of the article, abstract, and introduction sections of an article. After completing this module, you will understand what makes a good title and what you should consider when assessing these sections of an article. The title is normally the first impression of an article to readers, so the title must accurately describe the contents of the article and make people want to read further. Therefore, a good title should be accurate, concise, and informative. Some questions you might want to ask yourself about a title are on the right side of the slide. Details of all the questions you might ask yourself about the different sections of an article are in our checklist, which is available online. A good title makes the author's research more visible and discoverable. As Professor Bredange said, a good title should express what the article was about and make it clear to the readers exactly what the topic was. Taking a small quiz could help you understand this better. Please select which you think is the better title for each pair. Let's see the answer. For the first pair, the right one is better because it includes the full name of the disease, not just the abbreviation. Authors should avoid using abbreviations along in title, because they could have different meanings in different fields, and it could be unclear what the article is about. For the second pair, the left one is better, since it expresses what the article is about more accurately and especially than the right one. For the last pair, the left one is better, since it describes the study in a simple way and clear way, using a more straightforward word combination. Since most people will only read the abstract rather than the full paper, a well-written abstract should be a clear and short summary of the full article, including in the background key methods, important findings, and conclusions. In addition, it must be able to stand alone and ideally be easily understandable by readers without a specialized background. For this reason, it should also not include abbreviations and citations. Authors could use a full version of a term the first time and abbreviate it as appropriate for the rest of the abstract. When you evaluate the abstract, ask questions such as those listed in the right of the slide. The introduction should describe what the manuscript is about, giving the background for starting questions. It should provide the readers with the information needed to understand the basis of the study and why the authors conducted the study. All this information should move from general introductory points to more specific details directly relating to the study. It should not be addressed like a literature review. For example, an introduction could start with a topic overview and the beginning, followed by the cutting edge study, and the gap needs to be addressed. Finally, a clear statement of study purpose list at the end. From all the information provided here, you could make a primary assessment on the research significance of the article. Here is an example of real open peer review report, which has been published in F1000's research. In this report, the reviewer raised concerns about the explanation of background and the rationale of the study, 
as presented in the introduction. Thank you for watching this video. To find out more training audios, please visit our website.